Hello. Okay, well, I did an hour-long video on accessories and things, and so far pretty much nobody has watched it, but hey, doesn't matter. I promised I would do one a little more in-depth about kilt hose, although technically I think it should be called kilt hose, you know, alternatives, because, <laughs> you know, avoid the clickbait or whatever. Um, but these are things that I have, in fact, used or debated using uh, when I didn't necessarily want to, you know, risk ruining more expensive hose. And so I haven't brought in more expensive hose. If you're on the market for more expensive hose, you know, they, surely you'll track them down. Like I said, uh, it helps maybe if you have a grandmother who likes to knit. I mean, uh, so some guys also, you know, I was talking about flashes and, you know, some guys have an aversion to flashes for some reason. They think they're too, I don't know, traditional or just weird for some reason. I mean, if you're going for a casual look, I guess you don't really need them, you know. I mean, I, uh, you know, I've literally worn army socks, you know, which tone well with certain things and they, you know, can tend to run a bit tall and go up all the way your leg, but you can also turn these down and put flashes with them if you, you know, just don't, you know, have more expensive hose or don't want to, you know, use your good ones for whatever reason. Excuse me. Um, you know, and some people will uh, hem and haw about this, but they're not as tall and so to wear without flashes argyle socks of course now these ones have been washed a couple times so they don't look quite as crisp as they as they do when they're new they're starting to get a little bit fuzzy in the but from a distance who's going to know and you know i have several pairs of these in different colors that can go with a couple different kilts but for the most part you, you know you're not finding one-to-one -one tartan matches so much with something like that you're you know you're just kind of trying to do the poor man's version of a diced hose i guess uh you know and then similarly to that what i've you know done literally hiking is hiking socks but here i've got a contrast at the top so again with no flashes and just pulling this up you know from a distance or if I'm only seeing, you know, a handful of people on a trail anyway, they're not going to care that this is not kilt hose. And, you know, if I need thicker socks for my boots, kilt hose definitely might not be the way to go. <laughs> and wearing a $30 pair of <laughs> hose to go hiking, if you're doing more than a couple of miles on a little nature trail, almost definitely not the way to go. So it depends on what, you know, how much look you're trying to cultivate, who you're trying to impress. Uh, similarly to that, we have, you know, the in-between. These are just athletic socks that are thicker than army socks. Taller than, or, eh, yeah, a little bit taller than army socks. Definitely taller than hiking socks. So these I do usually wear with flashes. Again, when I'm, you know, not trying to impress anyone. And I got three pairs of these. And I'm still on the first pair after I don't know how many wearings. So they're, they're a bit thicker than the usual tube socks. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't have held up this long. Would I wear, you know, white tube socks with a kilt to my knees? Definitely not. <laughs> On the other hand, these that are some kind of Swedish Navy socks or something, they're heavy wool and um, absolutely horrible with a kilt. They look absolutely terrible. They don't come far enough up the leg to look good at all and they're super extra thick so they don't fit in any of the shoes I usually wear with a kilt they're basically if I was on the trail and I didn't want to wear cotton hiking socks maybe I could wear these but you know again if I'm not seeing anyone but would I wear these you know intentionally with a kilt anywhere ever to uh, you know even a 
slightly casual function on and up, no, they, they're just going to be terrible. Um, and so, you know, those being thicker wool and da da da, but the thin wool ones, again, having the correct top and I don't remember what I paid for those, but yeah, it was yeah, it was probably a slightly cheaper than these, but yeah, come on. <laughs> Spend the ten bucks and at least get some black ones or you know, in, in a low key, you know, flimsy wool. If you're going again to the if you're going to the festival or a casual wedding or whatever. Um then let's see next up you know, it's not really a particular order i had already kind of showed the piper hose which are a little more ornate and i'll show them again just because if i'm doing a video about kilt hose i might as well show off some kilt hose <laughs> so, piper hose uh as the name implies intended more for bag bag pipers for whatever reason i don't know if that came out of a military tradition or not but they have a nice texture to them, so a lot of people just like them. And they tend to be longer, so you can fold them down. Like, I don't know how much like, longer, longer they look than even the gray ones. But but trust me, you can, you can fold them more or less twice-ish most of the time, unless you have really, really tall legs. Um, in which case, then they might be close to perfect for you just to turn them once. Um... Whereas opposed to these, you can turn them typically twice to, like I said, I think in the previous video, you can kind of manipulate them to kind of show off, you know, depending on the style, the patterns can vary. So like something like this, if you just turn it over once, you might feel like the pattern kind of got lost. With something like this, you feel like the pattern got lost even more. So you kind of want to turn them down and then flip them back up again so your flashes are actually under two layers of cuff and not one. It's it, the, the, Like I said, with the issue with that is just you stretch out the tops a lot faster and then you really need the flashes to hold up the hose as opposed to just being ornamental. So it becomes a chicken and egg thing. Uh, the other standard thing guys like to swap in is the shooting socks which are, I don't know, they're around 50 bucks a pair the last time I, when I bought these. This was a few years ago already. Uh, again, an item that sits in the drawer most of the time. I have, you know, a couple pairs. Um, and then again, you can kind of manipulate how you want to fold them. If you want to show more contrast or less contrast, technically these are red socks with brown, not brown socks with red. So you can find different ones, but these are the garter ties instead of the flashes that a lot of guys like uh, because it looks more old timey, I guess. Um, when the when the actual garter ties became flashes, you know, is pretty reputably to be again another military thing. So if you want to look more like the old duffer and you're willing to spend the fifty bucks, or you can find or make something along the lines of garter ties. I mean, obviously you don't need this much actual woven fabric to tie up your socks, but I don't know how well, for example, shoelaces would work compared to, you know, the standard things like ribbon and now it's become elastic bands more commonly. So, I mean, literally I've almost talked for 10 minutes about socks and you didn't think it could go that long, but like I said, just kind of an, you know, options apart from some of the really decorative ones that cost quite a bit more.